we hear a lot of news or a lot of us talk like be nice okay don't be rude okay oh he's a teenager or this toddler pranks uh, so many divorces what's all this about what is the cause why is there a tantrum that's what we are going to learn today yeah it's basically a natural defense reaction that the lord has put in us as an emotion called anger it is there wired in us but that is not of the spirit but it is of the flesh and the satan uses that as a tool and an, as a mechanism to get his way through right all of us have anger all of us justify to say oh it's okay to be angry no it's not okay to be angry we need to live in the spirit and do what the spirit tells us to do we are called and we are made to keep in line with the spirit not with the flesh uh if we can read galatians chapter 5 you know these are all the things of the flesh and see what fits there fits of anger is of flesh yeah but what is of the spirit let's go to 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness move gentleness self control against such things there is no law we are not called to live in law yes nothing can control us except the lord he alone has authority and power over us nobody else so this anger it's an emotion that god has given us but you know we need to direct it in the spirit way and not in the flesh way and not giving satan a place for him to do what he wants to do for example before i really go into the message let me just get you to uh this passage that is there in the bible where god goes to an area where he meets a man with many spirits right and nobody in that place was even brave or ready to go near that guy because he was not even dressed he was possessed with so many right and when jesus came he started yelling he said why did you come o son of god he knew the spirits uh, sorry the evil spirit knew who jesus was and when jesus said you have no business with this man and he belongs to the lord the devil said okay let me go into the swine okay and all those spirits went into the swine what happened next not one not two not three of those swines there were thousands and all those swines belong to the people of the country right and all those swines went and fell into the sea the highlight the swines belonged to somebody else this man who was possessed was liked by no man but the lord had a purpose in him right and satan is watching the devil is watching the scene he knew if this man is set free then people are going to get their attention to jesus and whatever jesus says in the word of god is going to just manifest and great things are going to happen you know what satan did he put the he sent those spirits into the swine and the swine all those pigs went and fell into the sea that's a loss what will happen to those guys who owned so many pigs and they are at loss it's death right and people who have had cattle at home and if you know like when it dies you know what loss that is that triggers up anger immediately what happened those people said please get away we don't want to see any more loss here right so satan knew how to place or use his tool of anger even when god was doing something mighty so in our lives when god is doing something wonderful beyond imagination be very keen that you do not let this 
fleshy emotion anger come into your scenario right okay anger is an emotion given by god to each of us and anger in and of itself is not wrong but it is to subject to our management and we cannot succumb to anger right we will not succumb to the desire of the flesh or the flesh cannot take over but the spirit of god should take control so anger is of two kinds taking it biblically we see a righteous anger and an unrighteous anger right righteous anger to set give examples of who all were righteous anger in the old testament you see moses was angry right when he saw his own people being treated bad as slaves he was angry he fought against that soldier he left the city then he went out and then again when he saw that the people were disobeying moses was angry moses went up to mount to get what god had to tell for the people and when he came down with the tablets in his hand on which god had already written the 10 commandments by himself he saw that the people were worshiping idols it provoked him he angered you know that anger was expressed in such a way he just crushed down those two tablets something that the lord had himself written right he broke it he was so angry with these people he brought down all those idols he burnt it and then you know he said let me go back to the lord to ask for forgiveness he was angry he could have killed all those people he didn't do that rather he prayed for them and he went back to the lord interceding for them that's a righteous anger right and god though those people sin you know he just because moses went back to the lord though he was angry he went lord do something to these people god said okay lead them to the place that i have promised so when our anger is turned to what god's purpose is and what god's will is it becomes fruitful it meets a destination but an unrighteous anger is all that we do anything to do with flesh self and selfishness and greed is unrighteous anger so i'm not going to talk about unrighteous anger at all let's not have anything to do with it but talking about the righteous anger it throbs the kingdom's concern a person with righteous anger will throb the kingdom's concern there are three properties uh, or the marks for a righteous anger that is we will be able to analyze what the actual sin is what was actually wrong and then we will talk or we will think about what was god's concern about it right and once we know what's god's concern is then we will have a godly expression to whosoever it be rather than raging up with our foul languages so it all depends on how the fruit of the spirit works in us not giving way to the evil that is trying to attack uh two very important like uh, i would like to focus two important uh people in the bible that is one is moses and next is jesus from the old testament it was moses because he was the one who was with israel israelites right from egypt to the promised land though he did not enter the promised land he did not enter the promised land in quotes you know why because there was unrighteous anger in him disobedience you know first god told when these uh, israelites wanted water when they were in the wilderness god told moses strike the rock and you will be able to give water like fulfill their thirst so moses did again these guys started grumbling and you know moses was so close to god that anything spoken against god triggered him it just triggered him and because he was angry 
he did not wait and his ears were not open and he was not receiving exactly what God was telling him, he missed it. He went, the second time God said, speak to the rock and you will have water. But you know, that speak did not enter him. He got familiar with what God did last time. He went and struck the rock and that was the disobedience that God saw in Moses. See, a man with righteous anger was able to get so many people into the promised land. But because of that unrighteous anger, he did not enter the land. Right? Now coming into the New Testament, Jesus. Jesus lived life as human just to set an example for us. Yeah, we cannot say he is God, I am human being. He angered too. You know where, when he got angry? When he went to the synagogue, when he went to the church, when he saw those people making the place, house of God, a marketplace. Just imagine how he would have been. You know, he knew what was happening. He was so angry. His father's house, you know that owning my father's house and you want to make it marketplace. He threw down everything just that he did not hit people. He threw down everything and he said, you cannot do this to my father's house. That's the rage. He did not sin there. He did not abuse anybody. But he said, don't make my father's house a marketplace. Don't do wrong things in the house of God. Right? That shows that his mind was all set with the father. About what it is to the father. How the house of the Lord should be. His concern was all about the kingdom. All about what his father wanted him to do. And that's what we are supposed to be. And... Reading uh, Ephesians 4.26 Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. If, and give no opportunity to the devil. That's beautiful. It's just as plain as that. But to understand... Don't let the sun go down. It doesn't mean you get angry in the morning and the night, eve, by evening you finish it. It means you're angry with somebody, get back to that person. You know, it is not possible sometimes when you're angry, you really don't know how to control yourself. You rage it out, it becomes violent or it becomes so uneventful. Sometimes you don't have the guts to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. You know, immediately we tend to throw the blame on the other person. But take time. Even if it is going to take you two days, get back to that person. Get back to that person and say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. It's my fault. See, to become angry, it's human. But then what we do after that is our choice. You can't blame the other person. It's your choice. You become angry. And what you do in anger is your choice. When you're angry, you choose to do what the Spirit wants you to do, what God wants you to do. That's obedience. But if you're not going to obey what God tells you, what the Holy Spirit wants you to do, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. You do certain things. And then you say, oh, you irritated me. You did this. We tend to do it. Or we tend to say, oh, because they did that, I did this. But God wants us to get to that person, get to that situation and finish it there. Don't let it prolong. Don't let devil take more and more advantage and let him not start making a strong foundation with what you have done. Right? It's not about the people. Even if somebody is angry, even if somebody has done wrong and you know if you're facing that anger, Let's first understand, it is not that person, it is the spirit behind that person. Right? That's why I, I said, we need to be in line with the Holy Spirit. In line with God. So when we are in line with God, we will be able to immediately discern. Or we will be quickened by the Holy Spirit to say, oh this is not this person, it is the spirit behind. So don't react. Don't react to that negativity. 
Isn't it beautiful the way God has brought it? You know, the, just that anger, the term anger, and that's what is playing a major role in the world today. Yeah? Take any psychologist, he will say, oh, that man has got short tempered, he has got issues, anger issues, anger management. People are minting money with anger management sessions. Right? That's what the world, see all this while I was talking about the Bible, what God wants us to do, what we are supposed to, but let's look at the world scenario. When I say minting, it is not in thousands. People of God, it's not in thousands. They, some people have lost fortune because of anger. How blessed are we that we have a father who loves us, who taught us to forgive, forget and move on. Who strengthens us to do what is right. Aren't we people, aren't we the people who are supposed to help our fellow people who don't know the Lord, anger management? Right? See, giving literally dollars, euros and uh, dirhams to somebody for a lesson is costing that person but it costs us nothing. We freely receive and we are freely, we are supposed to freely give it. How much more we will be earning for the kingdom of God? That's what we are called for. So we need to really understand what liability or what is demanded out of us. We are all investments. Can, can anyone accept loss? When we have invested a thousand dirhams, we expect at least 200 dirhams as profit. At least. God has invested millions in us. Man, how do we, how can we ever go and say, oh, I can't do it. And we become loss over loss over loss. You know, kingdom of God needs to flourish. Kingdom of God is more like a banking system. God has banked something on us, you know, put, invested so much in us. Aren't we supposed to give back returns? He gave his life. He gave his only son to redeem us. Right? And we are here living happy, joyful, enjoying, celebrating. All this is what given to us so that not one soul will be left behind. Right? We are supposed to be earning those souls. That is the returns that we give back to the Lord. Because of anger, we see so many people losing their life. They commit suicide. Why? Because of anger. And especially at this, in this season where ch children, young people have done their exams, the results are coming out. You know, they expect something and what they have got is something else. Immediately they are angry. They are so emotional. They don't know how to handle it. They end their lives. But we know that we have a father who knows how to counsel us. We have the Holy Spirit to counsel us, to comfort us, to tell us how to do things. We have angels who are destined to instruct our way. How much more we are in debt to do that. We need to help our fellow people. Right? Now let me just go into a statistic. See, psychologists and you know, the scientists have researched so much and they have found this word anger is not just one. They have come to a conclusion of ten. There's so much more to it, but there are ten different kinds of angers. Assertive anger, behavioral anger, chronic, judgmental, overwhelmed, passive aggressive anger, Retaliatory anger, self-abusive, verbal and volatile. Each of these are so much different from each other. We just say angry. But if we want to really work on ourselves, if we really have to get rid of this nonsense, this flesh of ours, we really need to understand what these mean. See, assertive anger is um, a constructive type of expression where you see the feeling of frustration or rage and then you express your angers in a way where you 
want to change that situation. You look at some people doing wrong, you want to set things right. So you know, you get into that situation, you explain it to them and you say, no, this is not the way it has to be, it has to be this way. Sometimes you tell them, sometimes you work it out. So this is constructive. But even that, you need to know where your line lies or your limit lies. Don't overdo it. Which becomes a provocation there again. Behavioral anger is like, it is expressed physically and uh, usually it is aggressive. And uh, this is either because of drugs or it is be because of uh, interpersonal consequences this behavioral anger comes out. When this happens, the only way that you can get out is to know that you have an issue. You accept it. Yes, I have an issue. And when you know that you are going out of control, stop where you are. Don't talk further. Don't do anything. Just clear the place. Yes, to do that, you need the Lord's guidance and strength. And third type is chronic, that is, um, chronic anger is generally seen in everybody. It's because you're not happy with either some circumstances at home, or you don't like somebody doing something with you, or you know something is going bad behind you and then you're not able to express it. You know, it's continuous. Every part of our life, there's something that's making us feel it's not right. Yeah, and this one, though it is chronic, it's very beautiful and it's easy to get it out. All that you have to do is take some time and analyze yourself. When you feel something is not right and when you don't feel comfortable in some places, you need to just analyze, why am I feeling so? So when you start analyzing yourself, not the others, yourself, you know where you have taken offense, where you feel it is not right. So you correct yourself. Once you correct yourself, then things fall in place. There's nothing to be blamed on others. It's about you. And it needs guts. It needs courage to <coughs> accept and acknowledge, yes, I have this issue. Right? And moving to judgmental anger, the word says it, you would start judging people. You have a standard and if it is not according to that standard, if it is not according to what you want, you start judging people, you start condemning people. So that becomes an issue when you have condemned too much and people are not ready to accept your judgment. So stop being judgmental. What you like is not what others like. What others want is not what you want. What you think is luxury, what you think luxury is, is just basic things in somebody else's life. So let's not think everybody has to be like me or with me. Let's give space. Let's accept. Somebody growing well, let them grow well. You work harder to get to where you want to be. Right? So let's not be judgmental. The next one is overwhelm is an uncontrolled type of anger and it occurs when we feel that a situation or circumstance is beyond control. Especially managers or group leaders, team leaders. This happens with you. When you feel things are not under your control, you rage it out. It's not fair. See, God says it's not fair. It's not okay for us to get angry. If something is going out of control, it means that your flesh has taken over, then what has to happen? If your fellow members are not ready to listen to you, it means you have annoyed them. It, it means that you have projected yourself too much or you have expected too much from them. So this is the overwhelmed anger. So to get this in control, we need to seek help. You can be the head, you can be the leader, but you need to seek help from the Lord, from your peers. It can be even from your juniors. You need to talk it out. You need to set things right. 
This passive anger, uh, passive aggressive anger is like sometimes when you're angry, you don't feel like talking. You shut off. You know, that's more provocative to people who are talking to you and then you don't want to respond, you ignore and move. But you are silent to show that aggression that is inside you. Right? That's an indirect way of hurting people. You're hurting them mentally and psychologically. That's not good. And to get over this, you need to learn and develop your ability to articulate your frustration. You can't always shut your mouth and say, oh, I can't talk. Keep quiet. You need to speak it out. Talk to your whoever the problem is and get it out. It's wrong to just keep things inside you because one fine day that's going to burst out in a very wrong situation. Yeah, so that is, that is something that we need to really learn to speak out. The right words should come out, the right time. You know, only the Lord knows what is right, when, where and how. So if you're not in line with God, then this cannot happen. Next is retaliatory anger. This is, inst uh, this is like um, the anger comes when you're confronted, when you're told something is wrong or when you are pointed out, to, when people tell, okay, this has to happen, you're not ready to take it. You start retaliating. Because this retaliation comes because you are not able to do it or you think you know beyond. Who is this person to tell me? You know, you start firing back with words. Sometimes it can be things flying out or sometimes you can be thumping on the table. It's just that you are not ready to accept. So we need to accept and give space for people to talk to us and tell us what is not right with us. Correction, we need to accept. Self-abusive anger is when uh, a person is shame-based or when a person feels they are not worth it, they cannot do something or when they want to do it but they are not able to do it and situations don't come in hand with them that they start feeling small. They start feeling small and they start saying, I am of no use. You know, this is a very much a proof of what the devil is doing to us. Makes you feel insignificant. What am I worth for? What have I lived my life for? You know, you keep talking so much negative things. Your word, your mouth spills out so much negative words. Words of death. And you know, you are not able to move further. And such people will not be able to even be happy with others. Because you're feeling small, you make others feel small too. You're discouraging them, you're not letting them grow further. To stop this, first you should know what you're worth. And what God thinks about you. Who you are in the Lord. And verbal anger is where people are angry, but they throw words. Compared to the others, we might say this is okay, but... I tell you, when you hurt somebody with words, it cannot be erased. You hit someone physically, till that pain is there, they will remember, then the pain is gone, two months, three months, sometimes a year, and after that, it's forgotten. But when you have hit somebody with word, and when the wound is in the heart, it is scarred. It's dangerous. So we need to be careful with the words that we speak. Right? And volatile anger is a very dangerous one. This is what people who keep accumulating things against you. You have something to speak out, you don't. You don't like something happening with you, you just keep it in, in. And they wait for a situation to really bombard you with everything possible. They just get it out on you. Yeah? And after which, it's so difficult to set right relationship. This basically happens because of jealousy. 
because of jealousy you're not able to accept somebody better than you so you know you keep holding okay 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 and all that is getting accumulated and volatile one day it sets on fire and after which you cannot get back anything it's all gone to ashes so to get out of this kind of anger first and foremost you need to accept you have an issue talk it out settle it go to the lord tell him i have this issue and he will be able to help you there's nothing that the lord cannot do there's nothing difficult there's nothing big or there's nothing impossible for him he will be able to help you he, he will even send people don't think only the lord can help you yes only the lord can help you but he will use people to help you with he will send angels you will not know who that person is sometimes a stranger might come and just tell a phrase or just with a smile can work wonders in you so just be ready be ready to receive correction be ready to receive what god has to tell you so now we have seen 10 different angers and this 10 things i know all of us have somewhere sticking to us and we also know how to get rid of it know how to correct it and research proves that it is marriage that is majorly hit because of anger our god is a god of families but devil doesn't like it he just cannot stand unity he just cannot stand family being together and happy so you know this anger reflects maximum in marriages and that's why we see there are so many divorces we see people single some people take it as a, a challenge to say i can take care of my children single parent single father or mother how long can it go god didn't destin us to do that we are to live in harmony we are to be bound in love right and for this the spiritual guidance will be james 1 um verses 19 to 27 where you're supposed to be very quick to hear the holy spirit very slow to speak and slow to anger these three things are very important to keep the marriage going i know all of us have pressures or i know all of us have stress and tension but we need to be quick to hear the holy spirit the holy spirit is in us he is there he he is already dwelling in us he's talking to us every day but just that we shut off our ears from listening to him so let's be careful those of us who are married let's be careful let's be quick to listen to what the holy spirit tells us let's be slow to speak unnecessary words let's not be provocative let not our words fly around and let's be slow to anger let's not give in to flesh but let the holy spirit work in us let the spirit of god be stronger and let our flesh be weak right we will be strengthened by the lord our spirit should be strengthened by the lord and not by flesh and how do we overcome this anger how do we face it that is real time issues first and foremost you can admit you have a problem that is the spirit of anger is working in you very plainly telling you have the devil spirit working in you so many of us think oh how can devil come inside me i am a christian i read the bible sorry people even the devil reads the bible devil knows the word the bible in and out more than what we know only if we are ready to accept the devil has done something he has got a grip over us can we get that devil out of us if we are not ready to accept it he is going to dwell in us right so we need to accept it's you don't have to feel ashamed rather you need to feel successful that you know you have already confronted the devil you're going to take a step in victory so it's not shameful you don't have to feel small about it 
you need to accept it and if you want self control you need to face the reality that self control will come in only when you start leaning on the lord when you start thinking about what and where you are going wrong compare your life with the word of god compare your life with the people who are there in the word we have so many when you read the old testament you have so many kings who walked close with the lord and then one point of time you know their flesh gave in they wanted to become strong they wanted their way happening and they saw the downfall we have kings who were just 8 years old and they could rule over the nation how did that happen it was because they sought the lord they lived according to the instruction of the lord and we have great kings who fell because they did not listen to the lord and they gave in to flesh but let me tell you there's an assurance when you get back to the lord when you say sorry i know i have done this lord i really don't know how to go about it he is there to lift you up back there Amen. you're not pushed Amen. down to the pit he will lift you up again It's so beautiful the way God does it, right? And uh, Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse three to five. For though we walk in flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but we have divine power to destroy strongholds. how beautiful and by reading it itself i already feel that victorious thing coming up i feel my battle is already up right how many of you feel it it's already there with you god did not give you a sword to fight but he has given you the word he has given you the word a sword has just one side but we have the double edged sword the enemy comes here fling it fling it you you destroy the devil on both sides Amen. he cannot come near you he has given you a shield of faith you do nothing but just take that faith in you Amen. usually when these soldiers go for war they take that shield and you know why that shield is huge have you seen shields that is as high uh, as tall as them their body goes on that shield if they are dead in the war place they put you on your own shield and they carry that's more like the uh, structure that that is used but god has given us a shield not for us to lay dead on it but to move forward Amen. it is not as tall as us but it is in our hand that you give one blow Amen. right and those of you who play games online games you know these uh, computer games you keep banging you know you have such gadgets and such kind of oh, armors where you get one in your hand and hit i've seen emmanuel play that sometimes when i see him play i think god gave us such beautiful armor whereas those guys are you know they have something on their legs their shoes their hands their everything you just cannot see that person the face is hidden but for us we are here our weapons are not visible we have invisible weapons nobody can know it unless it, only the lord knows it how beautiful it is right and we are free to move around if you can remember the story of david and goliath where when david was given the armor the all those shield and things like that he said no i don't want all these are too heavy for me to carry i cannot be myself and if i wear this it will be like i'm trusting in that i don't trust in that i depend on my lord Amen. he will protect me so how beautiful that is so let's lean on the lord and uh, another verse that we need to read is uh <clears throat> Matthew 5:21 to 24 You have heard that it was said to those of old you shall not murder whoever murders will be liable to judgment 
But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. You know, anger comes when you have pride in you. And that is when you call someone else a fool. You think big of yourself and small about the other. Right? So if you are offering a gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. You know, our father is not a father who will say, Oh, you, you did wrong? Okay, come, it's okay. Let me take you. We don't do that, right? That's not the way it is. You have... You fight with your brother or you fight with your sister. You have something against them. Sometimes it may not even be verbal, but mentally you have something wrong. God wants you to go and get reconciled to that person. Horizontally. Vertically we have, yes, we need to take forgiveness from the Father. We confess. But He honors that horizontal reconciliation first. If this foundation is strong, then you build more and more and more and you get closer to the Lord. Hallelujah. When I was reading this, I just got reminded about this game Jenga. Where you use small wooden blocks and you build a tower and then you know you just take out pieces and keep building it higher. So I was just thinking, we were talking about it and so you know, when I read this passage, I just got, got it. You build a tower which is nice, strong, you know, with all the wooden blocks kept together. Then when you start poking and taking out one by one and building it up, this tower should not fall down. So we know it is steady. But it is not close or it is not that, you know, uh, solid as what it was initially. You have holes there. Some places are loose. Some places are not in place. No, some blocks are not in place. But you, if you see the end, you have built a taller tower. Our life can be solid when we are born. And as we grow and read the word and walk our life with God, some things can be pulled out from us. You know, some nasty things inside us. We are only talking about anger, but there's so much more. If we, we read in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 21, you see what is all of flesh, how horrible. All those are pulled out. And there's a vacuum there, which is filled by the Spirit of God. Amen. But the growth that we see takes us closer to the Lord. Amen. Right? Sometimes our pride has to be left out. Ego has to be thrown down, thrashed down. But when our ego is put down, you have such a close personal relationship with the Lord. You have beautiful relationship around you. There is a poke in you. There is a wound in you. Because that letting go of that ego is painful. It is shameful sometimes. But you see, God takes us closer. Our walk with the Lord becomes closer. So the wrong things to be made right is where the anger can be used. But, what gave, but God did not give us anger to do anything evil. We need to set the wrong things right. That is where we need to rage out. Are we there? Are we there? Are we ready to pray for our fellow members, our brothers and sisters, to stand by them, to help them come out of this difficult situation? It's not easy, people of God. It's not easy. Many a times, I get angry. You know, this specifically, this message came up because I started analyzing myself. I know what I was and I know what I am. And I, I was like, why am I like this? Where is it? And that's when I realized I have given in for anger. Taking offense or feeling, 
uh, not feeling good about some things. Especially, I get irritated when time is not met, when I don't th do things on time, or when I'm not able to get that enough rest. You know, God gives us rest. God strengthens us. But we, we usually tend to think, oh, if I don't sleep, I cannot do it. And you know, that was where I was giving in for the devil to take control, to say, oh, you have not rested, you cannot do it. You know, that was coming out in this place, like displacing peace and displacing so many things around me. So we need to analyze, we need to examine ourselves and be ready to accept corrections, be ready to speak it out, be ready to take help. Yeah? And when we do that, and when we stand together as a church, as a family, we will see that we are investing huge amounts into people which we have freely received and we are taking more returns back to the kingdom of God. Amen? Are we ready to take back returns to the kingdom of God? All the best.